For today's video, I'm going to take a deep dive into the time Sebastian Bach had his hopes and dreams dashed by his hero, Ace Fraley. So stick around, Cat Stanley Space Demons coming at you! So hard rock vocalist Sebastian Bach originally rose to fame as the lead singer of multi-platinum selling metal band Skid Row. They took the music world by storm with their 1989 self-titled debut album. He would go on to record three albums with the band before leaving the group in 1996 after the release of their critically acclaimed Subhuman Race Collection. Now Bach would continue to perform and record music as a solo act after leaving the group, as well as performing in Broadway productions such as Jekyll and Hyde and the Rocky Horror Show. And into the new millennium, Bach would also make appearances in television programs like the Gilmore Girls and reality series like Super Group, Celebrity Fit Club, and The Masked Singer. Now Bach was born in Freeport in the Bahamas, but he was raised in the small town of Peterborough, Ontario, Canada. It was growing up in Peterborough where he'd develop a lifelong obsession with the band KISS. By age 8, Bach had begun performing in a church choir, earning a monthly stipend which he used mostly to purchase KISS posters for his bedroom. He would become particularly enamored with KISS lead guitarist Ace Fraley, often painting his face in Ace's signature makeup design and creating homemade costumes so he could dress up like his favorite member of KISS. In fact, the circumstances surrounding his departure from Skid Row in 1996 culminated over a dispute about whether or not the band should play a show with KISS on their makeup reunion tour in 1996. When Skid Row received the invitation to be the opener for the band's New Year's Eve show that year, lifelong KISS fan Bach was obviously all in. His bandmates, however, were less enthused, and the idea was nixed. So you can imagine how excited Bach was to receive an invitation from Ace Fraley himself to write songs with him in Ace's studio in Connecticut. You see, Baz had hired Richie Scarlett, Ace's former rhythm guitarist from Fraley's Comet for his solo band, and along with Anton Figg, the drummer who played on the Kiss albums Dynasty and Unmasked, along with Ace's first solo album, all traveled to Ace's place to work on some tunes. Now Baz would describe Ace's studio as some sort of crazy, fucked up, drug crazed man cave. You see, Bach first met Ace back in 1987 at a Toronto rock club called Rock and Roll Heaven. When Ace would come to town with his band Fraley's Comet, Bach would head out to the club and hang out. In 1989, Ace would even join Skid Row on stage for a performance of the KISS classic Cold Gin at the New Jersey Meadowlands Arena when the band were opening for Bon Jovi. Needless to say, Baz was excited to write songs with his hero Ace, and he brought a micro cassette recorder and spent the entire drive up to Connecticut singing song ideas onto tape. Now the jam session would start unceremoniously with Ace popping a porno tape into the VCR that he had in his studio. But once things got going, Ace played the guy's a chord progression in the manner of Motley Crue's Shout at the Devil. Guitarist Scarlet and drummer Fig fell in behind Ace, and Bach closed his eyes and began to channel the Ace Fraley he remembered from that first solo album back in 1978. Heavy songs like Rip It Out and Snowblind. He came up with a melody for that main riff but when the band hit a wall in terms of where to take it next, he thought back to Skid Row's Slave to the Grind album sessions. He felt the song needed a fast riff, something sleazy, along the lines of the Skid Row song Creep Show. Bach says he even hummed a guitar riff to Richie and Ace that he had in his head, told Anton to slow down the tempo a bit, and add a cowbell to the chorus. Save for that original Shout at the Devil riff Ace provided, Bach was clearly the architect and composer of this song. He says he even suggested Ace play all downstrokes during the middle part, a la Johnny Ramone of the Ramones. 
The resultant song would be called You Make It Hard For Me, which Bach recorded onto his mini cassette recorder. The band celebrated their new composition. Now fast forward to 1997. KISS has begun sessions for the recording of their original lineup reunion album, Psycho Circus, with producer Bruce Fairbairn in Vancouver, British Columbia. Sebastian Bach's phone rings. It's Ace Fraley. Now it turns out, Ace played the demo of You Make It Hard For Me to Fairbairn, and he loved it. They were going to record it and put it on the album. Bach couldn't believe it. This was like a dream come true. He'd grown up listening to the band, worshipping them. Now a song he'd wrote was going to be on a KISS album? Incredible! But it was not to be. The song never made it onto the album. Bach would later find out from someone at Electric Lady Studios in New York City that an engineer on the Psycho Circus album thought the song was a piece of shit. So it was pulled from the record. Now, Ace would end up having one song on that Psycho Circus album, a number he wrote himself called Into the Void. But let's get back into the DeLorean and jump ahead to 2009. It's September 15th, the release date of Ace Fraley's first new solo album of original material in 20 years, and the record's going to be called Anomaly. Now, naturally, lifelong Kiss and Ace Fraley obsessed fan Sebastian Bach is chopping at the bit, whatever that means, to hear the new record. He's cruising down the Garden State Parkway in his IROC Z28, and Baz can't help but notice Ace's signature. It says, To Sebastian, rock on, Ace Fraley. He was such a fan that he asked him to sign the dashboard of his car with a Sharpie. Now, not being able to wait until he gets home, Bach removes the plastic takes the CD out of the digipack and puts it into the car's CD player. He immediately recognized the song's opening track, the main riff, that chorus, the downstrokes. He instructed Ace to play, even the cowbell. Now titled Foxy and Free, this was the same song Bass had written with Ace. Bach was ecstatic. The number he'd composed finally made it onto an album. His first inclination was to check the record's songwriting credits that say, Song Written by Ace Fraley. Ace even dedicated the album to the late Pantera guitarist Dimebag Daryl. It seems Bach's name was nowhere to be found on the record sleeve. He was heartbroken. He was betrayed by his hero. Now this is a summary of Bach's account from his memoir, 18 in Life. He says he recounted this story to his friends who suggested he take Ace to court over songwriting credits and royalties, uh, which he responds, taking Ace Fraley to court would be like, quote unquote, taking Santa Claus to court. This was unfortunately nothing new to Bach, who felt he'd been slighted in terms of songwriting and publishing by his old band Skid Row who tried to portray him as being nothing more than a pretty boy front man. But he maintains a lot of the songwriting on those Skid Row records was because of him, his signature sound that you can hear on his solo records. Now, not to excuse what Ace did, but you know, Ace Fraley has done so many drugs over the years, it's possible that maybe he had kept a copy of that demo and we're talking, uh, you know, 13, 14 years after they had originally composed a song. It's quite possible, in fact, I think probable, that Ace may have even forgotten that Sebastian Bach was at all involved in the recording and composition of that song. I mean, come on, Ace, the spaceman, we all know he's a flake, he's out of it. I mean, all the drugs he did, and over a decade later, he probably found the demo tape and said, Wow, this is a great, good sounding song. Let's put it on my new album. He probably had no recollection of those sessions. All the blow they did, the porno they watched. I mean, come on, man. I, you gotta try, I'm trying to give Ace the benefit of the doubt here. Not to excuse what he did, but uh, just trying to provide some kind of an explanation 
as to what might have happened, what I think probably happened, Ace spaced out. I don't think it was malicious on his part. You might disagree. Other people might disagree. Um, Gene Simmons and Paul Stanley might disagree. Uh, the way they've portrayed Ace over the years as kind of uh, the way he used Peter Chris when he was in the band Kiss. In fact, uh, Paul Stanley said in his memoir, memoir that uh, Ace's relationship with Peter Chris had nothing to do with friendship, that it was strictly mercenary, and that Ace would manipulate Peter Chris in order to help him, you know, to help them band together and try and get their way when they were in the band, which, you know, wasn't very successful, obviously, most of the time anyways. But um, that's the story of how Sebastian Bach had his hopes and dreams dashed. He was betrayed by his hero, Ace Fraley. Hope you dug it. Hope you learned something today. Let me know what you think about the situation in the comments. Was it uh, deliberate on Ace's part? Or did the guy just flake, man? <laughs> Let me know what you think. I hope you dug it, and we'll see you next time. Who's here? <laughs>